Now we spend some time with our friend, Ken DeCoster, here from the Sheriff's Office. You have a pile of material as we uh, we get into the season. Uh, we put I put a uh, post up yesterday talking about how to how to protect yourself a little bit as you're um, as you're taking part in uh, Cyber Monday and some of the cyber shopping. Uh, uh, some tips from detectives mm -hmm. on what to do and you know how to keep yourself from getting caught, and also in how to negotiate with crowds while you're out and about shopping. Smarter ways of keeping yourself protected so you and your stuff get home successfully. Excellent, Riley. Um, and from what I've heard over the years from, from police officers, don't be an easy target. I right. mean, when you're out shopping, uh, people tend to you know, have both hands uh, grasping bags of, of gifts, but then you're kind of vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, always leave your gifts in the trunk of your vehicle so they are out of sight. Yes. And just be aware of your surroundings, especially when you're in the parking lot of a shopping mall. Uh, in crowded areas, uh, one of the suggestions for men was uh, put that wallet in the front pocket. Pickpocketing is making a very interesting comeback around the country. Uh, a skill that you thought had been lost. And, you know, the French are very good at it, by the way. Paris is like the pickpocketing capital of the world, I'd read. So pickpocketing is making a comeback. And for women, keep that purse zipped as you have it on your shoulder. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people who reach right in and... Um, I would never reach into a woman's purse, even to this day. Amy's mm -hmm. like, can you get that out of my purse? I bring her the purse. Right. There's just too much I get stuff. confused and frightened. Yes. And, you know, here. What is all of this <laughs> stuff? And then she can, in, without even looking, reach in and pull out exactly the object she's looking for, which would have taken me an hour and a half, and dumping the contents out on the table. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, keep the purse zipped. Keep it close to you. Watch yourself when you have the bags. And uh, be careful in the parking lot. I, I just, uh, I'm amused at the thought of Amy asking you to... Kind of rummage through her purse, and you just bring it to her. Here, you deal with That's it. it. <laughs> I just, I, I don't. Ever since I was a kid, you know, I remember my mom saying, "Get me mom, this out of the no. purse," and I just, oh no, no. So I brought the bag. I still do. Yeah, I, you know, you don't want me in your purse. Uh, big, big event tonight, Riley, and I, I thank you. I saw you uh, retweeted a Loves Park tweet yeah. on, on Twitter uh, this evening. Uh, between 5 and 7 p.m., a public safety awareness forum is planned at the GPS Faith Community Church. That's on North 2nd Street. That used to be the <laughs> the old blue suede shoes. Okay. All right. I was going to say poison apple before yes, that. Yes. Okay. All right. Now I know um, what you're talking about. So I'll show up there. Um, <laughs> Thinking I'm going to sit dance? in a barber chair. Sit in the barber chair for a shots. couple of shots. <laughs> for those oh, who have been around a... town for a while, you remember what we're talking about. That was a happening place. 30 years 30 ago. 30 years ago. We were happening guys 30 years ago. Yeah, close. <laughs> close. <laughs> anyway, the uh, public forum is being presented by area and regional police professionals. Residents of all ages can meet and talk to the officers who protect their communities. A really nice... Um, list of uh, guest speakers, Sheriff Gary Caruana, State Police District 16 Commander Carl Heinz, Rockford Police Chief Dan O'Shea, Loves Park Police Chief Chuck Lind, McChesney Park Police Supervisor Doug Bushman, uh, McChesney Park Village President Jerry Bolin, State Senator Steve Stottleman. Say that four times. State Senator Steve, Steve Stottleman. Stottleman. Wow. Yeah, we like the alliteration. Yes. And State Representative John Cabello. Uh, yours truly will be there as well. And Typically, these events uh, draw good crowds. Uh, public safety is always um, front and center. Yes. And if you have five minutes to two hours to spare, stop by. Yeah, and and get to know the people who who will protect the community. You know, the, the more everybody gets to know one another, the better off things will be. Riley, in my um, short time, it'll be two years next month uh, with the sheriff's office and Crime Stoppers. One thing that has impressed me uh, is the amount of charitable work that law enforcement and uh, corrections officers are engaged in. Oh, yeah. Coming up on Saturday, December 10th, that's a week from this Saturday, the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office is teaming up with Target and Meyer to help make this Christmas season a lot more merry for some area families. On Saturday the 10th, between 8 and 10 a.m., officers from area law enforcement agencies will visit the Target off of 173 and North Alpine Road up in McChesney Park uh, to shop with children selected from the Harlem School District. Between 10 a.m. and noon that day, officers will shop with children at Meyer uh, off of 173 and West Lane Road up in McChesney Park. 
Target and Meyer are providing gift cards to the selected children to shop for presents. So that's it's so called cool. Shop with a Cop. Shop with a Cop. I love that concept. And then that's it's it's not a new thing. No, it's a great thing. It, it really is, and uh, you know it's just fun to watch the interaction. Uh, and we thank our partners, Target and Meyer, uh, for being very generous. Absolutely. Uh, providing gift cards to uh, needy children in the Harlem School District. And this should be a great event. Also that day, residents are encouraged to help fill the bus. On the 10th, a school bus will be parked uh, in front of Target between 8 and 10 a.m. on the 10th. The bus that uh, will then move to Meyer up in McChesney Park between 10 a.m. and noon. Donations of new toys, food, clothing, and paper products will be accepted. The donated items will go to students and their families in the Harlem School District that are in need in time for Christmas. Very cool. And I like the fact that it, it it's multiple items. Right. You want to drop off toys. You want to drop off clothing. You, you know, whatever people can use. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And this is just another aspect of the spirit of giving, not that you're familiar with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I prefer the receiving, Ken. You know, I, I didn't read the Dr. Seuss stuff properly when I was young. Uh, <laughs> as far as crime, Riley, uh, this from uh, WIFR, a scary situation for employees at a local bank. This happened yesterday afternoon. After police say a man fired several shots inside while robbing the place. It happened just before 4 p.m. yesterday at the Harvard State Bank off of Harrison Avenue near Mulford Road. Rockford police say several shots were fired during the robbery. No one was hurt. No arrests have been made. I mean, this is... Can you imagine... No. <laughs> ...being at your local bank right. at 345 on a Monday afternoon and somebody armed with a gun comes in? And it, not even in a, a lot of times you, you'll hear about that where a gun was displayed right, or right. alluded to. But it was, the transaction takes fired. place right. and, and, and everything goes away at that right. point. Shots being fired? Oh, man. That's, no, I, I, and, and for anybody who was there, that, uh, that has got to be a shock to the system you don't soon forget. If you have uh, any information concerning the robbery at Harvard State Bank near Harrison and Mulford, Yesterday, shortly before 4 p.m., uh, give us a call at Rockford Crime Stoppers at 815-963-7867. Uh, a week ago today, and this is a, uh, a great example of uh, cooperation among law enforcement agencies. During the early morning hours of Tuesday, November 22nd, 26-year-old Deontay Thrower Jackson was arrested following a joint enforcement operation involving the Rockford Police Department and Winnebago County Sheriff's Office SWAT teams. Thrower Jackson was apprehended in the 1500 block of Benton Street in Rockford on an outstanding arrest warrant for narcotics violations. Um, he was wanted on a warrant stemming from a narcotics investigation conducted by the Sheriff's Office and the Safe Streets Task Force. Uh, he was lodged in jail on that warrant and is also charged with delivery of a controlled substance and unlawful use of a weapon. After the arrest, uh, deputies searched his residence on Benton Street and also his car. Police seized a semi-automatic handgun, a large quantity of heroin, and also some, uh, some marijuana. And uh, Rockford Police Chief Dan O'Shea, Winnebago County Sheriff uh, Gary Caruana, praised the cooperation between the two police agencies and cited the arrest as a classic example of the success that law enforcement agencies can achieve by working together. Outstanding. And it's always great to see the cooperation, too. And, Ryle, you've been around uh, long enough to know that uh, over the years uh, there, it, there has been somewhat of a uh, territorial issue sure. between various law enforcement agencies locally. Um, but it seems... Uh, under the Carolina administration and the administration of Rockford Police Chief Dan O'Shea, there seems to be a concerted effort uh, to cooperate, to work together. Which everybody benefits from that. So, it you know, yep. if you hadn't been paying attention, that's very much worthy of applause there. Uh, last Tuesday on Crime Stoppers, we uh, featured a suspect who police say was wanted for uh, at least two armed robberies. Um, the Happy Walk on 11th Street, uh, Monday, November 4th, and the Family Dollar on North Rockton Avenue on Tuesday, November 15th. Um, police provided a couple of still pictures of uh, the suspect's um, image 
uh, during these armed robberies. And lo and behold, uh, police arrested a guy named Stokely Bledsoe of Rockford. He's 50 years old. Uh, they have charged him with the armed robbery of the Happy Walk restaurant on 11th Street, November 14th. And they also believe he uh, may be behind a armed robbery at Family Dollar on North Rockton Avenue on Tuesday the 15th. And the fast fuel place on North Main Street, uh, the robbery there that took place November 17th. So uh, it's good work. The police Absolutely. Uh, uh, arrested Stokely Bledsoe uh, following a Crime Stoppers report. Um, I'm not sure if the Crime Stoppers report uh, had anything to do with the arrest, but uh, getting this guy's uh, picture out there sure. has resulted in his arrest. And uh, we're, Outstanding. Th we're thrilled for that. Yeah. That's that why Crime Stoppers does such a great job, too. Well, we appreciate that. Uh, we are looking for the following four individuals. Marlon Taylor is a 23-year-old black male. He is 6'1", 205 pounds. He is wanted for aggravated battery. 36-year-old Ty Bressler is a white man, 6'3", 200 pounds. He is wanted for aggravated driving under the influence. 39-year-old Brian Shearer is a white man, 6 feet tall, 185 pounds. He is wanted for theft. And finally, 30-year-old Bradley Davis is a white man, 6'1", 150 pounds. He is wanted for burglary and theft. If you have any information concerning the whereabouts of these people, uh, give us a call at Rockford Crime Stoppers at 815-963-7867 or call toll-free at 888-769-STOP. And you can be eligible for a cash reward, Riley, of up to $1,000. Go to RockfordCrimestoppers.com as well. You know, you, you the, the, the bank robbery story that you mentioned with the shots fired, I, I just off the top of my head, I'm just thinking, how many times does that happen? I, I have the number here. How many banks get, got, get robbed in any given year in the U.S.? Oh, how God. many bank robberies are there? Let's put it that way. Oh, it's gosh. not number of banks, but bank robberies, like last year. Um, nationwide, you're yeah, talking? nationwide. <laughs> 4,000. Close enough. 5,600. Hmm. 5,600. By the way, 98% of bank robbers are captured. Good. But, uh, but yeah, 56, over 5,000 bank robbers last year. I don't know why that number blew me away. I, I was expecting in the hundreds, but I didn't know where in the hundreds. And when that number first popped up, I'm like, that can't be right. So I looked at three other places, uh, including going to the FBI. Yeah, over 5,000 bank robberies per year. And unfortunately, this area has seen its share of oh, bank yeah. robberies uh, in recent years, Riley. And again, just getting back to yesterday afternoon, just imagine the psychological trauma of the employees and right. the customers just thinking, frankly, fearing the worst. Is this person, is he on drugs? Is he, is he going to lose his mind and open fire yeah, and shoot somebody? Is this a robbery and a murder spree yeah, right, at the same right. time? Or what is this? And, and for people who've never been around a gun going off, um, just that in and of itself is going to rattle you to your core because right. they have a tendency to be loud. Oh, man. So uh, I'm... Be careful while you're out there. That's all we can say. Call Crime Stoppers if you can help. That's why they're there. Ken, good to see you as always. Riley, good to see you always. As always, thanks for the time. And once again, tonight between 5 and 7 p.m., a public safety awareness forum is scheduled at the GPS Faith Community Church. That's on North 2nd Street. Uh, you'll probably remember it as the old blue suede shoes or poison, poison apple or, or Riley's old stomping grounds. Exactly.